Let's play a game, shall we? The Saw series is one of the most bloody, successful horror franchises of all time, and Jigsaw's work is still far from game over. Saw Legacy will splatter 2017 with some all new trap happy death dealing. So to prepare for the gruesomeness still to come, here's a look at the untold truth of Saw and how it became such a beloved gore fest in the first place. Keep watching or don't. Make your choice. Cheap tricks. Like a lot of budding auteurs, Lee wan and James Wan had almost no money to make their first movie together, so they had to think cheap when coming up with the bare bones of their fright flick. And what's more budget friendly than an entire movie about two guys stuck in a single room together? At first they thought of having their characters stuck in an elevator with the whole movie made up of the security footage. A concept which might have prevented M. Night Shyamalan's devil from ever happening. But who knows, one even conceived of a paranormal activity like home footage concept before that series came to be, but ultimately they settled on the dank bathroom setting that would become so iconic to the series. First Blood to court investors, 1L and 1 made a short film on a shoestring budget that showcased the duo's originality and money-saving savvy. In it, 1L stars as the character who has to rifle around in a living friend's intestines to find the key to the reverse bear trap on his head, and that role would eventually be played in the full film by actress Shawnee Smith, whom James Wan had a major crush on since he was a kid. The spec also featured a Billy puppet made by Wan himself using ping pong balls, paper towel tubes, and paper mache, and the design was so creeptastic that they didn't bother changing it for the full film. Head case. The idea for John Jigsaw Kramer, the mastermind behind most of the series' sinister games, stemmed from a surprising source, 1L's own cranial treatment. The writer had been experiencing migraines, and when he went through some testing, he imagined what it would be like to get the bad news of his own impending expiration date, and how someone might react. He might not have had a medical issue, but his mind was definitely twisted. Show me the money. After Saw proved to be a surprise runaway hit at the box office, grossing 103 million worldwide against a reported $1.2 million budget, actor Kerry Elwes was pretty displeased with the comparatively small slice of the pie he received from the proceeds. In a suit filed against the production companies and producers, Elwes alleged that he was only paid about $55,000 in all, even though he was promised at least 1% of the the producer profits. He sought half a million in damages and the parties eventually settled out of court. The acrimony must not have lasted long because Elwes came back to the franchise to reprise his Dr. Gordon role a few films later. Congratulations, Dr. Gordon. You survived. Desperate for the sequel. Given the massive success of the first movie, Lionsgate was in a rush to get Saw 2 moving right away, and the producers thought outside of the bathroom box for the second installment. Up-and-comer Darren Lynn Bousman had already written a screenplay for his own film called The Desperate, but it was criticized for being too similar to Saw. So producers saw an opportunity to tinker with Bousman's flick and transform it into a follow-up for their own. His foray into the Saw series was so successful that he remained on board as a director of the third and fourth films as well. Sticking Point Although nearly all of the traps in the Saw series were complicated, none could be more labor-intensive than the needle pit scene from Saw 2. 120,000 needles were needed to fill the prickly vat, and it took a round-the-clock team four days to replace the real needles with fiber optic tips for Shawnee Smith's safety. After all that prep, making the site poke free, a crew member accidentally knocked a pile of real needles back into the heap, so they had to halt production before it could even begin to locate them. Director Bousman later joked on Reddit that it was like finding a needle in a needle stack. Good one. Good blood. 
as a nod to all the on-screen bloodshed in the first two Saw films, Saw 3's theatrical promotion included a poster made using a real vial of actor Tobin Bell's blood, mixed with red ink to create the most visually jarring shade for his cloak in the image. Lionsgate printed 1,000 copies of the design and auctioned it off to benefit the Red Cross, in addition to hosting a series of blood drives organized by the studio that raised thousands of pints for the organization. Toilet Humor There's very little levity to be seen on screen in the Saw series, but behind the scenes, the cast and crew found ways to keep the mood light. One running gag during the production was the use of a hidden fart machine that was set up during particularly difficult scenes just to mess with the actors. That's not all. During Bell's nude morgue scene, his splayed out exposure got him cupped in the nether regions by co-stars. Talk about your crude humor. Friendly favors. Rather than rebuild the bathroom set from the first film for Saw 3, the filmmakers simply called in a favor to the makers of Scary Movie 4 and used their replica, minus the basketball hoop and falling pipe, of course. Damn it. Oopsie daisy. In 2010, one Massachusetts theater full of children was supposed to show an innocent screening of the animated flick Megamind. But that wasn't the film that actually started to roll. Instead, it was Saw 3D. Some of the children supposedly experienced nightmares after seeing the first few minutes, which is understandable considering the opening scene has two men who have to hacksaw their shared girlfriend to save themselves. Sleep tight, kids. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch more videos like the one you just saw. And leave us a comment to let us know which Saw story you liked most.